Do you also struggle to pay attention to work for more than a few minutes at a time? Well, it's not your fault. Our brains are constantly super stimulated. Everything is designed to be too delicious, too engaging, and too shocking to look away. If you think you have a bad, spouses, jobs, and homes have been lost due to World of Warcraft. At least three people have died of dehydration while playing computer games. Other non-fatal side effects of the modern world include an IQ drop of 10 points just for having notifications on, and also severe attentional deficits when spending only over 20 minutes a day on your phone. I don't have all the answers, but I do struggle with focusing on what I need to. So instead of downloading and reinstalling Instagram every few days, I've been trying to figure out exactly what happens in our brains when we reach out for these distractions and therefore how to avoid them. How can I be more peaceful, energetic, and willing to work? If any of these three steps sound familiar, we have some necessary unpleasant work to do. This leads to a drop in our motivation or willpower and that leads to procrastination. I'll explain what I've discovered happens in our brains during each of these steps and therefore how to change it to have sustained willpower and do more pleasant feeling work. Let's get straight into it. Let's first talk about our drops in motivation. When we leave a task and switch onto something else, we think our attention has switched from this task and also our motivation for this work has dropped. If our attention was on this task or if we simply had more willpower to do it, we would surely be able to stay working. This is not true. There is a lot to suggest that our willpower is a lot less depletable than we previously thought. It does not run out very fast. Even when we think we are out of it, we actually have a lot more. It's just hidden. See, both our willpower and working memory or attention are both strongly mediated by the same part of our brain, the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. What this theory suggests is if our attention shifts onto something else, it will therefore bring our motivation along with it, being perceived by us as a motivation drop for the task that we were previously doing. So it's not just that we are distracted, but our motivation is distracted too, so we can't work. In order to do a task, we need to be able to focus on it so we can sustain our motivation for that task. So we need to clear out our brain from distractions. This means if an intrusive thought or desire comes our way and takes up space in our working memory, we need to write it down immediately and plan to do it later, or even promise to ourselves that you know what, I'm going to think about how horrible of a person I am today at 4pm because I don't have time to do that right now. This can help free up working memory space and keep our attention, focus and motivation on the task at hand. Now, I hope I haven't lost you because I'm also quite cautious of this theory based on anatomy alone. But very interestingly, there are lots of important studies that show that even thinking that we have endless motivation or more motivation than we previously thought can help us perform better at tasks, make less mistakes, and even somehow increase our IQ by up to 15 points. The optimism of thinking that we have more motivation or that difficult tasks make us more motivated helps us perform better in general. This is very important if, like me, you should subscribe very strongly to the ego depletion theory, which I'll link somewhere else. And at the very least, planning to procrastinate later is very important because it makes your phone less accessible to you to reach out whenever you want to. And getting used to removing this option for yourself has huge benefits in the long term. A study found that keeping notifications on while we work, even if we are told explicitly not to look at them, think about them, or check them, lowers our performance in these tasks drastically. The average IQ of the people in the study dropped by 10 points when keeping notifications on, and this is double the drop seen in studies of cannabis users. Another study of 7,102 adolescents found that even spending 20 minutes a day on their phone lets you severe attentional impairment. Some interesting things in the study also found that the more likely you are to have your phone by you while you sleep or while it's charging also showed some intentional impairment, probably because of the patterns of behavior of people like me who are very likely to do this. So in general, it seems the best thing that we can do for our willpower, motivation, and focus when it comes to electronic devices is keeping them as far from us as possible, keeping notifications off as long as possible, also spending as little time as we can, and not reaching for it again and again throughout our day. Being aware that we control our attention, our attention controls our motivation, so we'll be motivated for what we focus on. Before I move on to my next point, I wanted to take a moment and speak to those among us who, like me, work and struggle with creative products. Making these videos takes a fair bit of planning and time, and amongst the five or so apps that I use for scripting is Milanote, who are very kindly sponsoring this video. 
I am extremely particular when it comes to the apps that I use for work because honestly, I think that they do affect my thinking and output. When I'm in the planning stages of my scripts in particular, I will take everything that I've worked on so far over to Millinote where I can see it all in one space and therefore I can move things around and check whether the connections exist or how strong or weak they are and how to link things together. As someone who currently does the majority of her work on a computer, it is the best thing that I've found so far to check my thinking and unblock me when I don't know where I'm going with a thought or a structure. I personally prefer to make my own pages from scratch. I have a video where I mention my horizontal thinking and that's how I organize things here too. But if you prefer some pre-made structure, there's a bunch of themes on there already that you can use in order to get you jump started and unstuck. You can definitely add photos onto your pages too, a feature which I extensively use while procrastinating from studying and spending time thinking how I might change my desk setup. You can get Millinote for completely free with no time limit with my link in the description. If you also work on your computer a lot like me, it is the best thing that I have found to bridge that gap between writing down and typing because having all of these space to move things around means that you can visualize, find a logical structure and think a lot easier and better. I would absolutely give it a go, especially because you can for completely free. I'm now going to move on to exploring and potentially changing the way that we think about doing unpleasant but necessary work. Now, if you feel very, very guilty for potentially procrastinating or not wanting to do your studies or your essays or your work, this can get a lot worse and it's super common. A very peculiar and extreme case of procrastination happens with patients with chronic disease. An observed effect of some patients with a deadly disease who have a very important medication, which is potentially life-saving, that they need to take every single day, is that they will sometimes just stop taking it. And the potential reasoning explained for this is that for these patients, even thinking of the medication has such a negative feeling because of course it must feel dreadful to be reminded every day of the physical condition that they are in. If they take two of the medication accidentally, then maybe they need to go to hospital. Maybe they have a fear of needles. There's so many negative associations around it that eventually a lot of these patients actually stop taking the medication altogether, even though they know it is necessary for their survival. The process of even thinking of doing the task becomes so unpleasant that they stop doing it even though they really know that they should and they really want to. The theory that I'm referring to here is that of the uh field, which describes this subconscious flinch that we get at even thinking of doing a very essential but unpleasant task. The way that this phenomenon is described is that in the beginning, there's no flinch and no fear or no procrastination. There's only very real negative consequences for an event. For example, if you don't do good work, you're going to get fired. If you don't study well, you're going to fail your course. You're going to be embarrassed. If you don't pay a very expensive rent, you're going to be kicked out of your house, etc., etc. Most people start to feel this negative emotional stress when they are starting to plan or doing events in this direction. And eventually, they might even get to the point where even before planning, just thinking of anything associated with this important task or problem means that they have this huge negative emotion and they want to avoid it immediately. This is what's potentially happening with the patients. Usually associated with this mess is a displacement activity, something that seems to be comforting or numbing that we do instead of doing the task that we're supposed to be doing. So for example, having a very important exam and instead of revising and studying even the week before, binge watching a TV show to numb yourself out and avoid that huge negative feeling. Now there's a solution to this and 80% of it is already done by listening to what I just said because understanding this process means that we will realize that this a uh field or this negative strong feeling that requires a displacement activity will happen essentially before we have started planning for a task. So the solutions right are one, when we are given a task or give ourselves a task, and before we even go down the cycle of making it terrible for ourselves and having this flint, realizing that this is going to be really bad, I'm probably going to develop an earth field around this. So I need to be cautious every time I start to think about it, I need to immediately force myself to make a plan. Because once I make a plan, these cringe or flint will go away and I'll be able to complete the task. Also realizing what sort of things are we more insecure in. Because the bigger the negativity or the negative consequences, think about the patients for whom risk is actually death. The bigger the negative consequences, the bigger, the quicker, and the stronger this earth field will be developed and the more we'll want to procrastinate for the task. So realizing where I'm really more insecure and more likely to feel that I have negative consequences is going to be much more helpful for us to be able to jump into that planning immediately. In this way, we quiet our lizard emotional brain, bring things back into our prefrontal cortex where we can plan, organize, and structure. And we've also addressed how to approach 
necessary but unpleasant tasks, which leads us with our very last point. The last barrier in our brain's focus on work are the displacement activities, the mind-numbing, addictive, interesting, anxiety quietening things that we tend to procrastinate on when we should be focusing on work. Things that we do when we simply can't focus. So what I'm going to use here are the two ways that our brain can make decisions. One is a bottoms up decision making, one is a top down decision making. Now, procrastination, I think, almost all the time is a top down decision making activity, which basically means it's an automatic rule that we always do. Top down decision making means something is encoded, it's automatic. We from, we have a rule for it, so we just implement it. It comes top down like an order. When I'm bored, when I'm distracted, when this is no longer interesting, when I'm tired, when I'm hungry, when I can't understand what I'm doing, when I'm scared of the consequences of my studying, I'll just get to Instagram and scroll the wheels. So this is a top down decision. When we procrastinate, we're just going for the default. I'm bored, let me grab something. I wake up in the morning, go to my phone. I finish my work at night, get into bed, I have my two hours of scrolling and doing whatever I want. These are the rules that we're just implementing. What I'm suggesting is that when the opportunity arises for us to switch a task or when we feel bored or unfocused, we don't use this top-down processing, but we instead use bottom-up processing. Now, the difference between bottom-up processing is that it's a case-by-case -case basis. It uses no rules, but from the bottom, it collects everything from our surroundings, moment and environment. How do I feel? What am I thinking? What do I need? And from that, it comes up with a single solution for that case. So let's say that I'm unable to focus on my work and a top-down processing would be, let me just grab my phone, stay on my reels for a few hours, feel too bad. And then it's, oh my God, it's too late for me. I'll just have to go to bed now at 10. I'm just going to sleep early so I can wake up tomorrow and do my work. And then I end up procrastinating until 2 a.m terrible. So a bottom up processing in this case would be I'm feeling thirsty or I'm feeling distracted or I'm feeling anxious or I'm feeling tired or I'm uncomfortable in my chair or I've just been looking at the screen for too much. I need a break. And then realizing what's the actual thing that I need in that moment and doing that instead and making it energizing. I mentioned in my last video, which I'll link somewhere below, that I use these dice, that I use dice like this, which have kind of a word etched on each corner and I will roll the dice and it has complementary activity to things like stretching and music and working and calling a friend. So high energy things with hopefully lots of sounds to oppose my quiet deadening work, which often does become boring and I don't want to focus on it anymore. So I complement with those instead of reaching for my phone and just procrastinating on things that I wouldn't want to do. Gathering information from our head and body to make the right decisions at the moment is an amazing way to change previous patterns of behavior that we want to get rid of. There was a huge info dump of methods and studies in this video. If you want a summary of these that you can refer to or do more reading on, there's a free notion template linked below. It'll probably have some points or questions and guiding things if you don't want to make your own notes on this, or if you want to refer to this information later without having to hear my annoying voice throughout all over again. So if you want to get that, there'll be a link below. Just download it for free and duplicate the template onto your notion. But otherwise, if you made it so far, thank you so much for spending this time with me. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Be conscious about others and don't believe everything you think. Thanks, bye.